Hey everybody, it is I, your Survivor buddy Gordon Holmes here with the nerdiest thing you're going to do all week. I'm talking about the Survivor 45 Power Rankings and I am joined as always uh, by my good buddy, Challenge Beast from Survivor 44, uh, your friend and mine talking about Franny Marin. Franny, welcome. Hello, hello. I'm back. I'm alone this time. My voice is a little bit better um, and I'm feeling really good about uh, the Power Rankings this week. I don't know if... Uh, Gordon, are we going to get to the, uh, the scores? Is that, Screw does that come up here? <laughs> Screw it. Okay. Here's the thing is if I had come out on top this week, I would have said one lonely survivor guy all by his lonesome managed to best two survivor players. Uh, but since I lost, I'm comfortable saying it took two survivor players <laughs> to best this one lonely survivor guy. So yes, yes. <laughs> the team of Blankenship. What's, how, how, what's the. What's Frankenship. The Frankenship, Frankenship whatever yeah. uh yeah that they, they teamed up uh on me congratulations you must be so proud uh they had j my at spot 11 i had j my at spot eight uh so the current score is team Marin 60 team holmes 55 congratulations you must be so proud <laughs> yeah Wow, you're a really gracious, gracious loser, Gordon. This is awesome. Now I'm like, should I throw my whole rankings just so that we don't do this again? I'm the same one who's like, this is such a commitment. And I'm so thankful that you <laughs> take time out of your every week to do this. You are the greatest person alive. And on the other hand, you get a lead. And I'm like, yeah, I show up here and you're like, you are horrible. You're even sick. You're under the weather. You know, I know. you should be in bed with a bowl of chicken soup. Uh, and a hot water bottle on your head is that a thing that seems like a thing people do yeah. that yeah yeah that's where you, sh <laughs> you shouldn't be in front of your computer talking to some guy about yeah so it's 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 all you know it, it, people expect you to zig you gotta zag that's yeah that's what yeah, it yeah, is. yeah 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 keep, keep, keep me on my toes i appreciate it but yes congratulations well deserved because like we said like the merge uh episode is just one of the toughest ones to call so um, hard and and not for nothing I was quaking in my boots waiting for that shot in the dark because I think I had Caleb in spot two. I was like- I crossed everything I could cross. I was like- Yeah, yeah. I was I was watching with Matt and Matt turned to me and goes, this is going to be a bad power rankings for you. <laughs> and then boom, yes, Caleb. I was, I was very psyched for him. Isn't that was it, such a cool moment. Isn't it terrible what this does to us? Because I adore Caleb. Yes. And I was like, bye-bye, Caleb. See you later, yeah. buddy. Peace out. Oh, it's tearing God. all of us apart. It's, know. you know, what is it, this? It, What's the point? It's kind of like if, like if you play fantasy sports and somebody from your, your fantasy team's playing your real team. Oh, yeah. I felt dirt. I felt awful. Um, I wanted Caleb to go home. And yeah. if that didn't happen, I wanted Emily to go home. Yeah. Oh, my, my heart, God. Yes. Could you imagine if that had happened? Oh, my God. Yeah. Ooh. It was. That, my like, heart's a flutter <laughs> yeah it's rough i'm not proud of it uh, i'm not I'm not proud of, <laughs> of how i felt about that uh let, let's jump into the the message board see how everybody else did and for a merge episode our audience did amazingly well uh which speaks well of you um how you spend your afternoons watching this might not speak the best of you but how well you pick survivor speaks very well of you we had quite a few people call it uh perfectly uh, which is very impressive uh carpe diem uh alan w c blazer c uh andrea uh, excuse, excuse me andrew gulia uh, Jonathan Gashima, uh, they all had JMI in spot th 13. Also, amazingly, nailing it in spot 13. Someone who was on the opposite of the things last week, Kate the Great. Kudos to you. See? Oh, my gosh. Redemption. Everyone's doing it. Yeah. Everyone's coming back. Redemption is just a week away. So I'm so proud. So proud yeah. that none of you just, like, quit and went back to your husbands. So kudos yeah. um go if you have husbands, go back to your husbands, by the way. Like, yeah, definitely absolutely. spend time with your husband. Yeah. yeah. That could have gone many ways. I think you know what I was getting at, though, right? Yeah, no, I, 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 I picked up what you were putting okay. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to your husbands. Um, <laughs> if, if you're comfortable there. I don't want to tell you what to do, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Who had spot 12? Yeah. In spot 12, uh, we had uh, Brandon Fetcher, uh, Linda Walkup, uh, Logan Smith, Joy Survives, Mouse Sparks, Big Brother Spoilers, and JP15 is me. Uh, tied with Franny in spot 11, uh, we have Kristen Dicker, Potato Dog. I love you, Potato Dog. Uh, Chris Homelin, Survivor Drip, uh, Nadia X01, Lucas Catillus, Kevin A, Eric Swain, Lonnie Moore, Alex Milne, and Dr. Death. Uh, Ooh, in, sp uh, uh, in spot 10, uh, Cats Rule the World, Joel M. Gallagher, Jag 519, Damn Daniel, Sam Mercalio, and Sloan 8504. 
Uh, in spot nine, all by his or her lonesome is socially awkward potato. Uh, tied with me in spot eight, Eric Chavez and Mr. Platt. Uh, and finally, in the worst spot, but honestly, not that bad considering the episode uh, and, and and where it ended up. Uh, prodigious girth in spot seven. Like, not bad at all, honestly. Like, if you want yeah. to use the hug, but like, you don't need it. Like, you were one off. Um, you know, yeah, like, yeah, it, like, very impressive. We were all on the right half um, yeah. of the numbers. So kudos. Um, anything else that happened during the episode that we should talk about? Um, you know, it seemed like a lot happened. Um, the, the thing that kind of blew me away was everybody, every, everybody who wore a, re a red buff at some point is like J Maya and nobody, yeah. it didn't seem like anybody from Bella was making moves to bring her on board outside of Jake, yes. maybe a little bit. So that, that was kind of like the mind blowing thing is like, I, I figure enough people get to her, she might become a swing vote or become a free agent. It just never happened. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I picked up from your exit interview with Jay that actually helped me to understand why Reba was throwing her name out so much is I hadn't thought through the fact that she returned to Reba after the uh, journey and lied about the amulet. Mm -hmm. And so that helped me understand that Austin comes back. He tells the truth about the amulet. Suddenly now uh, Dee and Julie really think, oh, J Maya is super lying to us. So that helped me understand that whole situation. But yeah, it is a bummer that nobody was able to pick up Jay, I mean, uh, the other people who I thought would maybe be really attuned to this is um, Caleb and Emily. I mean, they're no stranger to feeling like they're kind of on an island on their own. You'd think that they would maybe say, hey, we can turn this around. Let's let's work on somebody else. I was actually really shocked this week, um, given that, you know, only half of the tribe is up for elimination, that uh, certain people's names didn't come up at all. We didn't hear Jake at all. We didn't hear Kelly at all. Um, so I was I was kind of surprised by all of that. But yeah, very interesting shakeup. Another thing I want to talk about is Bruce's last minute idol find. That was so stressful. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very interesting that uh, everybody knew about it except Katura. Um, and I, I imagine that's a thing where they might be telling Bruce that they're not working with her. But in, in actuality, yeah. people like Caleb, people like Kelly are obviously having conversations with her. But just kind of an interesting mix up. Uh, something I found very interesting was when they started pulling rocks for to pick the the, the individual teams, and you looked at the two teams, Katura had to kill her to pick the Bruce team. Yeah. But how do you not uh, with that yeah. lineup? Uh, yeah, they got to figure out a better way to pick those teams because I feel like every it's, this is the the fifth time they've done it. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that right? Fifth time they've done the earn the merge. Yeah. Yes, yeah, they've done it every time. Yeah, and yeah. I, I feel like it's been pretty easy to pick the winner based on just the size of the teams. Yeah, um, yeah, they, they got yeah. to do a bigger way. And I know, I know why they don't. I was there. Um, they haven't done. I don't think they've done a schoolyard pick since the beginning of Gabon. Uh, yeah, and what's I'm up sure with that? I, I'll tell you. Um, and there, I'm sure there are survivor experts. If I'm wrong, let me know if there were, have been schoolyard picks past then. Uh, but I was there. That was the, my very first season covering Survivor. And it was weird. It was like, this is the first day of shooting. And it was our first time seeing the cast in all their clothes. It was my first time ever seeing Jeff Probst and a million cameras. And they're going to run a check. I was like, it was uh, heaven, right? For a, an yeah. old, a, a Survivor fan like me. And then when they did the pick, you could just kind of sense that like, oh, this is horrible. This is a train wreck. What is going yeah. on? Because they started out with the elder members of the tribe picking the people and they mm -hmm. didn't want to pick big, strong people because then it would be obvious that they're not big, strong people. So the, the, if you go oh. back and watch, the tribes ended up so lopsided and production was just like, oh, this is this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad for a while um, just because it was so clear that one tribe was going to about to decimate the other. So I imagine that's why there hasn't been a schoolyard pick since then. Uh, but yeah, they got to they got to figure something out because it was clear as day uh, which tribe was going to was going to pick up the win there. Yeah, well, and the other thing that I've noticed with this season is the past maybe four challenges have been quite physical and have either not had a puzzle component or the puzzle component, in my opinion, has been pretty straightforward. Like this puzzle that they put together, like it seems like more just a matter of getting the pieces up there to me than like really, it didn't seem like a difficult puzzle. Um, so that's kind of interesting as well, because then Again, we're like reiterating this message that like strength is really important and it really matters. And I think somebody like Jay um, would have really shined in a more kind of puzzle heavy scenario. So then maybe she would have done a little bit better. I don't know. So um, it's there's there's weird things happening with Mergatory. There's maybe still some kinks to work out there. I, and I don't hate it. Like, I, I don't I don't obviously I don't mind the classic way. You know, mm -hmm. it, maybe it does help to like narrow it down to only like half the people are targets. 
Uh, yeah. Because, you know, you, like you said, like of that six or whatever, not all of them are even targets there. But like, it, it, the, yeah, it was it was just really clear as day who was going to who was going to win it. So, uh, yeah, I don't I, I, I'm, I'm not against them them doing it, uh, but they got to figure that part of it out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Make the rocks, Jeff. Come on. Come <laughs> gotta on. Make it a little more even. OK, the rules of the Survivor Power Rankings are as follows. Each week, our two combatants will create separate power rankings. The ranking of the person who is voted out of the next episode will determine the number of points the players will earn. For example, if Julie is voted out this episode and I have her in second place and Franny has her in fifth place, I will receive two points and Franny will receive five. At the end of the season, the person with the most points will be named the Survivor 45 Power Rankings Challenge champion. In weeks like this where it seems like two people are going home, the same deal. Each person and their points will be added to the person's total. An important note, rankings are not based on who the player thinks is likely to win the entire season. No, no. The smart strategy is to rank players based on how safe you think they are in the upcoming vote. All right, Franny, ready, ready to do this? Yes, I will start us off. All right. In spot number one, I'm uh, shaking things up from my usual. I have Kendra in spot, spot number one. Okay, potentially wild. But I was thinking to myself, I was looking at this spread. Again, we're looking at potentially another weird week, a little hard to do with the power rankings because who goes home is going to be so dependent on how these two groups are broken up. But I'm looking at Kendra and I'm like, who's targeting her? I genuinely don't know. You know, her name wasn't brought up this week. Granted, she wasn't eligible to be eliminated, but even before they went to the challenge, um, I think she's quirky. I don't think that people are looking at her as a huge threat. And I would be shocked if she goes home next week. Okay. Uh, it, it, that actually is an amazing question. Like I, I, we don't know for sure, but we're assuming the tribes will be, the, the tribe will be split in half with the, them both competing in the stand in one place and hold the poll immunity. One person yeah. gets immunity and there'll be two tribal councils. We're assuming, um, uh, that's, that's what makes kind of like the flip side of, of your season where I believe one tribe was safe and the other tribe. Um, right. And who went home? Yes. Who that was home? when Matt went home. That's oh, when Matt went home. And, and was so there that's some why... way someone could have saved him? Hmm. What was the... Corden, oh, you want to unleash the, the, the <laughs> rage? Is that what we're doing here? Because I'll go off. Um, but uh, what I'll say about these these sp split tribe, you know, part of the reason this is so hard to rank is because I feel like often when um, you have these random splits and it's a smaller group, somebody who like shouldn't go home ends up going home. Like, like I'm gonna maintain if we hadn't split into two groups, no chance Matt goes in that spot in, in my season. So um, I'm just, I feel like I was aware of that as I was going through these. You were like, I would cut somebody before I would let them vote out my Maddie Bear. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's the nickname. That's not a bad nickname though. Maddie Bear, yeah. Maddie I'll Bear. cut somebody, but I will not drop my whole ball thing is yeah, apparently yeah. how they tell. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, like, apparently there's no boundaries here, Franny. Like, that, like <laughs> yeah. there was a line and I was like, bye-bye. No, so, I know. I thought I was in a safe space, but no, I'm not so yeah, sure. You're not in a safe space with a five-point lead, okay? All bets yeah, are off. Yeah, All bets are off. Uh, uh, that's yeah. right. Uh, it's about what I have Austin. Uh, the Sandwich Revenge Tour has hit its first victim. Sorry, J. Maya. Now, let, let's look at where we stand, okay? We've got the Reba 4 on one side and the Bellow 5 on the other. Bellow 5 has all kinds of cracks. Um, we have Emily has a strong bond with Reba. Uh, now, if there's a tribe split and there's two tribals, it feel like there's the potential for the Reba 4, Sifu, Emily, and Caleb maybe to work together. That gives us 7 out of the potential 12 with Caleb potentially wanting to protect Katura and Austin wanting to potentially get rid of Kelly. It's a lot. Um, all I know is Austin isn't, isn't that big of a target. Um, and now that he has a fully functional idol, uh, I, I, I say if he feels like he's in trouble, he's going to play it and he'll, he'll be fine. Um, in spot two, I have Drew. Uh, like we said, these weird, tiny little tribal councils where you still have to contend with 11 other motives and opinions are the worst. So if I'm Drew or Austin, I'm ready at the drop of a hat to bust out my bag of tricks. Uh, if Drew ne is feeling vulnerable, play that advantage and just walk away. Uh, it, it's it's you know, once you get into your 11 person and 10 person tribals, then you have, you'll, you'll have a better idea of what's going on. But right now it's too hot. Uh, so if I were them, I would be ready to, to, to move with any one of those advantages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm right up there with you in spot, in spot two, I have Austin as well. Um, I think that he's, he's got one idol already. Uh, he's got another one, you know, cooking if he can get rid of Kelly. Um, and I think that uh, for him, you know, if he, even feels any lick of trouble. I think one of these smaller tribals is a great opportunity to just play your idol, get it out there, and then move forward with the rest of the game. So I think he's in a wonderful position. Um, in my spot three, I have Drew. Um, again, 
<laughs> I think he's in a really good position. I think that um, there was some heat on Reba this week, it felt like, but it it appeared that that heat was more directed towards the Reba women. Um, Caleb kind of out loud at Tribal mentions this strong group of three women that had been voting together, um, but it seemed like Austin and Drew were not included in that kind of circle of strength. So they're a little out of the limelight. And again, Drew still has his uh, safety without power that he can just pop out and leave. Um, I feel confident that if he's in trouble, he'll have a good enough read that he can just do that. So he's pretty safe there in spot three. I lied. I did not have Julian spot two. I had Julian spot three. So uh, I apologize. If, if you oh. you know, it's, it's an imperfect uh, presentation here. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm not proud of it. Um, so, so, wow. Suspicious. Okay. No, what is, no. Uh, so I had Julie in spot three. Uh, she <laughs> is the least threatening member of the lesser of the two big alliances. And I only say lesser of the two because everybody knows about Bruce's idol. So it seems like there might be a little more pressure on that alliance. Uh, nobody seems to know about Austin's idol. And with Jay Maya out of the game, uh, there's nobody to uh, bring out the truth about her lying about devoting for Sifu. So again, Julie, there's just no reason. And what a moment of her being like, Jay Maya voted for C. Like just the way she like threw that out there at the at the merge yes. feast. It's like, ooh, Julie so confidently to... cutthroat. Good for Julie. I'm Good really, I'm really Julie. Yeah. yeah, maybe I should have her in spot two. Um, <laughs> in spot four, Kendra. Uh, you, you know what my survivor Achilles heel would be? Um, I I get along with most people. I don't mind being in the dirt and the mud and the bugs. I can go, you know, for however long without eating. I help around camp. I'm good at challenges. But pretending to be happy about like the weirdest things would kill me. I, it, it, oh, you know, I, I, I don't know if I could participate in the stick bug dance. Uh, I don't know if I could pretend that pyramids are really space batteries. I don't know if I could do like the early morning yoga or like the, the psych up dances. Uh, that's 100% why I get voted out. Uh, and Kendra, she's great at all that stuff. People seem to really enjoy her quirkiness. Uh, she's probably a ton of fun out there. And, I, you know, that's valuable. That's why, uh, uh, that's why Jam Jam did so well. Uh, you uh -huh. know, he just, he's fun to have around. So there's really no reason to target her right now. If things turn on Bella, there are a lot bigger names than her. So I think Kendra's safe in spot four. You weren't big on the stick bug dance this week. You didn't like that? No, I like, I, I would just like, everybody be like, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. and they'd be like, <laughs> the Gordon background. didn't, Gordon, Gordon didn't get down with the stick bug dance. He's got to go. And I would be, going. Yeah, yeah. and I would be the person saying that probably. I so. know Franny <laughs> would be like writing my name. She'd be like, this is for the stick bug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I love that. Um, in my spot four, I have Jake. Um, again, as I alluded to earlier, I thought it was really interesting that um, Jake was one of the people who was potentially up for elimination in that uh, unsafe mergatory group. And his name never came up once. I think that speaks a lot to maybe how he's presenting to this new uh, merge group. I don't think that he's going to be presenting as very threatening. And he seemed to navigate that potentially precarious situation quite well. So again, like you've mentioned, if eyes turn to Bellow to get somebody out on Bellow, I think there are bigger names to worry about. And I feel like he's in a pretty solid position. And we've seen him talking to a lot of people, talking to Kelly, Caleb, uh, seems to be in with Bruce. In spot five, I have Julie as well. Um, I have her a smidge lower than you, again, just because Caleb did sort of seem to put some heat on Julie and D at Tribal Council. That has me like a tiny bit worried that people could look to Reba and, and start thinking about how strong they are together. But ultimately, I think she's not very threatening, is playing a, a really savvy game. So I think she's she's doing well this week. Uh, in spot five, uh, to quote, Samuel Jackson in Jurassic Park, hold on to your butts because I'm down five points and I need to take some big swings. So it's spot five, I've got Bruce. Whoa! Whoa! Talk like me through this one. Talk right. me through it. Bruce is a mega target, but he's got an idol and he's the most paranoid person on the beach. Uh, he's a pariah or a papariah, whichever. Uh, I am very confident that if a they end up on split tribes and he's down in numbers, which is a very good possibility, he will play that idol. There's probably something to be said for someone who, who played as briefly as he did and had it taken away from him. There's got to be a different kind of urgency. So I think push comes to shove. If he feels like he's in trouble, he will play that idol. Wow. Uh, I'm First of all, We'll get there. I'm smelling disparity of the week. This is this could be what's happening here. Um, your logic is sound, and now I'm questioning my logic. 
Um, I think when I was making my rankings, I may have forgotten that Bruce had an idol. That is the honest. highest compliment you can give is that you're reconsidering your, your rankings. Yeah. And I thought you were going to say the desperation of the week. They're like, yeah, that's where we are, Franny. You have is a that, yeah, you. desperation I smell? Is that the desperation um, of the week? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that logic. I like that logic. Um, maybe I'll give my rebuttal when I get to, uh, get to my Bruce right. ranking. Okay. Uh, at spot six, I have D. Uh, D got some heat on her at the last tribal council, but it seems like the the immunity challenge we're going to see is the Parvati special. Uh, that's the one where you just like hold on to that giant pole. And I, whenever I think of that, I always picture Parvati like holding on to it and just being like, Ugh. so um, yeah. Yes. Uh, but here's the thing. You know what Parvati didn't have? A giant toe. There is no way. Mark my words. <laughs> Write it down. Take it to the bank. D is winning <laughs> yeah. immunity this week. She's going to prop that giant toe right in one yeah. of those slots. She can hang there all week. So oh my God. D is perfectly safe in spot six. I love that. I did not think about that when we saw the next time on with the immunity. Genius. Her toe, again, it's an unfair advantage. Jeff should say, really D, is. you should just start like higher than everyone else or something. Um, so, uh, John Kerhoffer, who is the, the challenge producer and one of my favorite human beings on the face of the earth, legitimately should ask for photographs not in a weird way of of like the player's feet going forward just to know maybe Ooh. don't have this challenge when you've got <laughs> you know d look how weird my thumbs are not awful Ooh. there we go i have to think about it to make it do that but Ooh. yeah <laughs> like if i'm hitchhiking you don't know which way i'm trying to go um, yeah, but yeah. yeah. d, d <laughs> wins immunity bank on it I hope that uh, no future, you know, potential survivor players are applying for survivor. Part of the application process now, send in foot pics, <laughs> courtesy of Gordon. There's going to be a scandal. Yeah, yeah, I smell a scandal. Um, in my spot six, I have Emily. Um, I think that it spoke uh, really well to her game this week that when Caleb's shot in the dark hits, suddenly Jay Maya starts scrambling and is trying to throw Emily under the bus. Um, nobody seemed to fall for that at all. All the, all the votes went straight on Jay Maya. Um, I also noticed that this week during the strategy conversations, Reba seemed to view Emily as a member of Reba. Um, there's that moment where they're all sitting with her and they're talking about how they want to vote out Caleb. And she's kind of making this face like, like you could tell she's not excited about it, but um, great, in that conversation, great. she's like, oh, really? that's great. Thanks guys. Caleb? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, but, but you can tell that um, they really seem to view her as a trusted alliance member and not as somebody who's going to go and immediately spill the beans to Caleb, which of course is what she does. Smart. Anyways, I think she's in a wonderful position. And um, even though Lulu may have some heat, I, I really think that people will want to keep her as a number moving forward. That's an excellent point. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, in my spot seven, I have D as well. Um, I didn't even think about how valuable her toe will be in this challenge, but um, honestly, I just put her here for her strategic prowess. I think she's doing very well. Um, I think that, uh, again, she got a little more attention this week than, you know, in previous weeks, but she's quite savvy. And I feel like she is, you know, making relationships with folks. She has her strong four core. She's got to end up with one of them. However, these tribe, you know, splits break down. So I think that she's hopefully in a good position moving forward. Okay. All right, spot seven, I have Jake. Uh, the thing that blew me away last week, and I mentioned this before, is that, again, everybody's saying Jay Maya's name. Nobody in Bella was stepping up to bring her on board except for Jake. Um, yeah. You know, obviously didn't go the full way, but, you know, saw the opportunity. Uh, I, I, my, I worry if he's just doing, like, half measures, where he's like, I want to work with you, Caleb, I want to work with you, but not actually working with them. Just, like, yeah. planting seeds that he never cultivates. Um mm -hmm. But yeah, I think they're bigger targets than Jake right now. Again, he was, you know, he was one of the targets, the, the people available last week and his name never came up. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think he's safe, but I'm, it, it, you know, with the, the two tribes, things could go any which way. So that's why he's this low. I think he, he's doing a good job, but again, um, yeah, nobody's nobody's truly safe this week. Yeah, me. well, and also to that, um, I kind of see what you're saying with the like planting seeds and not really cultivating them because yeah, we haven't really seen these relationships come to fruition for him. But I will say planting seeds and forgetting to water them better than not planting seeds at all. Because sure. I think that there are some other people in this group who we'll get to who maybe aren't even so good at planting seeds with new people. So um, yeah, I don't know. I'm hopeful that those that those relationships will come to fruition eventually well i just think of everybody at new lulu making advances towards caleb and caleb not feeling like any of them were legitimate until katura actually told him what was going on so yeah. that is the thing, like just saying like i want to work with you is different than like 
let's work on this thing. So yes, and great point related to that. There's that scene, uh, brief scene with uh, D and Jake, where D is kind of asking Jake what he's thinking, and he refuses to give a name. And D sort of even says like, "Okay, I'm going to be more open than you. I'm going to give a name." So so maybe that is kind of Jake's mo right now, is he's not quite being being open enough to really get people to trust him. Uh, it's spot eight. I have Sifu. Uh, it's like I said in my interview with Jay Maya. I love Sifu in real life. We'd be best buddies, but I would send him home so fast on Survivor. The second I'm having a chat with somebody and you like sneak up. Sorry. You gotta, oh, you got that like, was wild. Like, that was insane. Some, what, what do you do? And like it's it's like when uh when when uh Tony Velachos first showed up on Game Changers, he thought it'd be funny to run out in the woods and be like, I'm looking for idols, and everybody's like. He's definitely looking for idols. So even if yeah. you're being funny, like, don't be funny. Be a player. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, he, he's all over the place, giving people reasons to target him when there shouldn't be. Um, like I said, you don't have to go home, but you got to go uh, out of my game. Uh, the only reason he's this high is this challenge might be in his wheelhouse. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, being somebody with, you know, his poise, for lack of a better term. So, that, so yeah, Sifu and Spot 8. I see, I see. Uh, in my spot eight, I have Kelly. Um, so uh, in terms of this challenge, we're talking a lot about the challenge. I could see Kelly doing really well at this as well. I think that this challenge tends to work better for kind of like smaller, lighter people. Um, and she seems pretty compact. Um, so hopefully she can win immunity. Um, I do think, so the reason she's so much lower for me than in previous weeks is I think Austin's sandwich revenge is hilarious. And I think it's also pretty real. <laughs> I think that I could totally see him, you know, going after her, wanting to upgrade his amulet. Um, especially since I remember last week, Caleb pretty quickly identified that Kelly was a good player. I, I wonder if other savvy players will identify that quickly too and see her as a threat. Um, so that's why I have her a little bit lower here, but again, she's been playing the middle. I, I hope that she'll be swapped or swapped, I don't know, rocked, but you know, split. put with split. That's the word split with people that, that, that she feels she can work with. Um, in my spot nine, I have Katura. Um, Katura was a very hard one for me to place this week because, I don't know. I feel like I'm having a hard time understanding where she stands. Um, she doesn't seem to be doing super well with old Bello. We saw her disagreeing with Bruce and with Kendra about where to put votes this week. Um, but we also have seen that she sort of built up a relationship with Caleb and Caleb's still here. So that could be helpful for her. Um, I could see a world where things turn on her if, if, you know, she's in a smaller group, especially if she's put in a group with Bruce then, you know, then I think it's really one of them. But I just don't see her as as a huge threat in this group, which is why she's not lower. Uh, in spot nine, I have Emily. I'm thinking Drew and Austin had a lot to do with keeping her around this week. And honestly, if I were them, I'd feel a lot closer to her than I do with Dee and Julie. They voted together. Uh, you know, they working together to get rid of Brando. Uh, but, you know, Kendra and Bruce still want blood. Like they have like Kendra wants revenge for Brando. Bruce wants revenge for a slight that happened two minutes into the opening credits. So Emily's never going to be safe, which is weird because she's not any kind of real challenge threat. And it's not like she has like a ton of political power uh, amongst the tribe. You know, her closest ally, you know, almost got voted out by 12 people last week. So uh, Emily, I don't think she's ever going to be safe as long as Bruce and Kendra are still around. So uh, Emily in spot nine. In mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, 10, I have Kelly. Uh Hell hath no fury, uh, like a gentleman who's been robbed of a sandwich. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the take... saying. I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's very popular. Forced to take a useless amulet, uh, which is a shame because there's literally no other reason to target Kelly right now. Like she, she is a player. She is doing a fantastic job with Bellow. There are much bigger targets there, so uh, she could should just be able to hide for a while. But she's got this useless amulet that, that you know puts a target on her back um so yeah uh she seems like i said she seems to be tied to everybody she knows what's going on she's almost like if caleb had like a lower profile is how i see her and that like mm -hmm. she seems to be doing and saying all the right things but not yeah. everybody knows it uh yeah. so kelly in spot 10 it's a shame she has to be the slow only because of the amulet and the sandwich so yeah one thing that's interesting about kelly is is i feel like um with this you know potential the tribe is being split in two and they're going in two separate groups to tribal this is one of the few situations where I could maybe see Austin and Kelly actually having reason to come together to use their amulets at the same time, if they are in the same group. Uh, so I'm very curious to see if that ends up being a topic of discussion. Because um, right now, what is it? It's a steal a vote? 
extra vote? Steal a vote. An extra vote. I thought it was a. It, oh no! Does it go from an extra vote to a steal a vote? Because a steal a vote would be so. more powerful, right? Yes. Fair yeah, right. I think it must be a steal a vote. So, I, so I, don't know. I hope that that gets to play out because I think that that'd be. But do they have to do it like power, uh, power twin style, like in order to to like yeah. fuse them together? Yeah. How would that? Yeah, they, they have to like go high five and. If the art department didn't make them into Legos, that is a huge miss in my oh, book. They I should be. Put them together. And I know it's yeah. Lego. I know the plural of Lego is Lego. I apologize for saying Legos. Oh, I don't think I knew that. That's very true. Um, we we interviewed the host of um, Lego Masters and we said Legos and he let us know about it. Oh, uh, no. We were wrong. So, oh. FYI. Yeah, okay. Wow. So I want people to learn here. Just, just We have fun. I also yeah. want you to learn. So Yeah. If you don't come away from every Power Rankings episode with at least one new fun fact, mm -hmm. then we've done something wrong, yeah. I think. Uh, in my spot 10, I have Caleb. Um, Caleb, so I don't think he's in a wonderful place. I mean, I have him quite low. Um, but I think I'm feeling a little optimistic that despite having so much heat and so much attention on him this week, I feel like sometimes after somebody has something really big happen like that, they can kind of just like fade back into the background because um, I, I don't know, it can go one of two ways. You've seen seasons where somebody does something really big or somebody is is a target and they're just a target again and again and again until they get out or they win or something. Um, but I feel like other times targets kind of rise and fall because people get restless. You want to target somebody else. You want to like, you know, change your plans. So I could see a world in which he's able to just kind of like squirrel back into his hidey hole and start building relationships again. But ultimately, I mean, seems like a bridge has been burned with Caleb and Bello. Um, seems like he also may have burned a bridge with like Dee and Julie during the tribal council by bringing them up. So I'm very nervous for him this week. I think that that's really interesting. You said that because I think later in the game, you've got like the one person you got to get, but earlier in yes. the merge, like there's a variety of people you can target. And I think there is something to like, you know, everybody had that moment and you they were probably kind of happy for him at the same time. Yeah. So I, I, I do imagine. The, and the, the only thing not working in his favor is that there was, it was all like everybody voted for J Maya. Like there was, there's no like cracks based on that vote to work on. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I think that's an excellent point you made. Yeah, well, okay. And this is, this is maybe too far out there, but um, this reminds me in a way of uh, Angelina when it, uh, in David versus Goliath, when it came to light that she was kind of doing jury management with um, Elizabeth, I think, who was getting voted out. It almost like defanged her because everyone was like, oh, we all see that she's playing the game too hard. And then she was able to go really far. I wonder if something similar could happen with Caleb. Like everyone has acknowledged this guy is super charismatic. He's playing everybody. Does that in a way like take away some of his how threatening he is? Maybe. Um, I don't know. I'd be curious to see how that plays out. In my spot 11, I have Sifu. Um, I'm a little more concerned for him than you are. Um, if he gets put into one of these smaller groups and uh, he's with other Reba members, I could see them throwing him under the bus in the same way that they just did with Jay Maya. And earlier I was talking about, you know, Jake uh sowing seeds and starting to build relationships I think that uh Sifu's not gardening <laughs> he's just spending time you know playing air guitar or whatever um as we saw a while back when Sean showed up on his beach I don't know that he's wonderful at, at building relationships with new people I it, in my mind I kind of perceive Sifu as a pretty you know straightforward guy I think he's just thinking Reba strong so if he gets swapped in a group that's that's not super psyched about him I could see him going easily this week Okay. Uh, and 11, I have Katura, uh, and she's a she's a tough one to call. It was so weird to see Lulu kept her in the dark while they're idol hunting. But like I said, you know, that might have been for Bruce's benefit. We know that Caleb's talking to her. We know that Kelly's talking to her, potentially Jake as well. And then, you know, kind of being the, the lone Caleb voice, uh, you know, as they everybody was, you know, everybody was targeting him. So it, it is a thing where it's like, Who's working with her? There have been people said they don't trust her. There was the whole papaya incident uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago. So, you know, I I don't know. If she ends up on a little tribe with Bruce uh, and neither of them have immunity and Bruce has an idol, I could see this being Bruce taking his opportunity to take a shot at her. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, that's uh, that's why I have her this low. And again, she is my winner pick, so it breaks my uh, fragile yes. little heart. Yeah. Uh, and a spot, I don't know. Like, I don't do the thing well. That's... A, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm old. What do you want? I've never seen anybody shoot that. Damn millennials. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, it's spot 12, Caleb. Yeah. Um, my wife works on Wednesday nights. Uh, so when she gets home, I tell her what happened on Survivor. She's she married me, uh, and is not does not care about Survivor. Um, that's not true. She likes uh, she likes Devons. Oh, that's, that's like the one okay. Survivor thing she likes. There was like legitimately like a Survivor at her wedding. She didn't care about Survivor. Um, so uh, Jeff Probst gave her a wedding gift. She didn't care. Uh, so when I when I she asked what happened, I told her what happened, and she didn't know who Caleb was. So to describe him, I said this guy's perfect. Like everything he says. <gasps> Everything he does, he's charming. He's wonderful. He's perfect. Love this guy. With one exception, everybody knows he's perfect. Yes. That's the thing. There's never going to be a bad time to take out Caleb. You can't yeah. go to the end with Caleb. People would write his name down with a smile on their face. So uh, be it this week, next week, the week after that, Caleb's got to go. Um, and if if they have a chance to take a shot at him, um, they got to do it. Because if they don't, he's one of the best winners of all time. And it, yeah. I know we're only midway through, but like it just it's just the way he brings everybody in, the way he th- sees things, the way he thinks outside the box. Even yeah. like I want to know where this I want I want to find this idol so I know where it is. I don't know if I love that idea, but it makes sense. It makes sense yeah. to me. So uh, yeah, unless 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 Caleb finds an idol, he's going to be at the bottom of my rankings from here until either he wins or gets voted out. Yeah, yeah, I think that that makes sense, and that's a perfect way to describe Caleb. He truly is playing this like perfect game except for the fact that everybody sees it like I feel like he really sees the board a lot more clearly than than other people out there um so it's a bummer for him that he's been you know kind of put into this precarious position but he might be uh, Batman he He might might actually be Batman is Batman (laughs) I'll just throw that out there he just might be Batman yeah yeah oh gosh and I love his confessionals too they're wonderful um in my spot 12 I have Bruce Uh, I will admit when I put Bruce this low, I did slightly forget that he had an idol. Um, but thinking about it and hearing you talk through that, I still am not feeling wonderful for him this week. First of all, we see him show up at this mergatory, immediately start fixing the shelter. You know, he's back to his Bruce usual stuff. And I think that that starts to grate on people a little bit. And then also with Bruce. So Bruce... I had a really tough time with him this week because he had this excellent read on Caleb that Caleb was going around and talking to everybody. I mean, that was, that was right on it. I think Bruce was very right to target Caleb, but at the beginning of the episode, you see him immediately tell three people that he's found this idol, you know, and I don't know that that was the best thing for him to do. So I feel like his, his uh, strategic choices are maybe a little erratic um, and that just has me very nervous for him. Um, hopefully, if he's in a dangerous position, he can play his idol. But another thing I noticed when he found the idol is that he made a point to say, not that the idol was going to protect him, but that he was going to use the idol to blow up someone else's game. So I could see him getting a little overconfident with it. And even if he feels he could maybe be in danger, you know, not wanting to use it for that, but rather to blow up somebody else's game. Plus, doesn't help him that three people and now many more people know he has an idol so if he is being targeted they will take every measure i'm sure to make sure that he doesn't know so yeah i'm concerned for for my guy bruce this week unfortunately i feel bad i feel like he's been at the bottom of my thing for so long oh gosh but another thing to quickly think about um is you know once that idol's gone and once the either he or if katura goes why target bruce it seems like he's Uh, rubbing a lot of people the wrong way he might be like a good person to take to the end at this point yeah exactly exactly and you know I, I don't um I guess the thing that the reason to target Bruce honestly is that he seems difficult to control you know what I mean he's not going to be anybody's number so it's sort of like he's almost like this like time bomb that's just waiting to go off you never really know um but yeah I don't know he's an interesting player I'm, I'm really honestly very glad for him that we're get, getting to see his game fleshed out a lot more after it was cut so short um even though he is sort of being portrayed in this villainous light I, I'm really just glad that he's actually getting to go out there and play I'm really proud of him all right, our picks are locked in below. They cannot be changed. Um, the rules of the power rankings are, are very strict. Uh, no locks this week. We didn't agree on anything, um, oh. which considering, you know, the level of animosity we have towards each other now is not surprising. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here's the here's like, worst case scenario. I hope we get back on the same page friendship-wise next time. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's a lot to ask for, Gordon. We'll have to see. 
I know. Right, I some... Barton and Franny, one of the oldest rivalries of all time. <laughs> oh yeah, and those two, like you know, they they like they don't get along with anybody. So uh, yeah, that's maybe it's a lot to ask. That it's it's frankly impressive we've made it this long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and our biggest disparity, uh, Bruce Gordon swinging for the oh. fences. I have Bruce in spot five. Uh, Franny has him in spot twelve. If he goes home, we might want to. This might this might be done. You might want to yeah. stick a stick a fork in it. Uh, that might be it. off. Yeah. That might be it for the power rankings. All of all of you people in the comment section are still doing great, but if Bruce goes home, that is probably it for me. Um, <laughs> I'll, which I'll still keep plugging along. Um, and I, I don't half ass anything. I use my whole ass, so uh, I'll I'll still try my darndest. But uh, yeah, Oof. Uh, yeah. So our picks are locked in. Any of your picks in the comment section below. Uh, feel free to keep score along the way. You know we all believe in the honor system here. Um, before we wrap things up, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, nudge the subscribe button. That does me a huge favor, gets us in front of more people. Uh, check out my graphic novel, The Bad Guy, uh, legacycomics.com. The link is down below in the description. Franny loves it. She doesn't like me anymore, but she loves my comic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have any Actually, Franny? exclusively like the comic? Not Gordon. Not the yeah. author, the artist? Nah, I'm not sure. The book? Awesome. The guy? Yeah. Meh. Uh, anything you want to call out um, while we have you? I'm good. No. Oh, uh, no, I'm good. Just keep watching the show. <laughs> I won't. No. Yeah. Man. I'll, I'll come just... up with something for next week. I promise. Yeah, what, like Find you... something to promote. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. So come back this Thursday uh, for exit interview. Oh, better not be with Bruce. Two exit interviews, I'm assuming. Uh, whoever <laughs> gets the boot. Uh, Franny, I know we don't like each other anymore, but you're a friggin' rock star. Uh, <laughs> like, I, you bring so much to this. You're so funny, and your insights are on point. Um, and obviously you're doing great because you're winning. So again, I want to thank you so much. Thank that boyfriend of yours, Matt, for coming by last week. He's a doll. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, everybody, we hope to see you uh, next Monday uh, for even more of the Survivor 45 Power Rankings. Woo! <laughs>